It's a quarter of a century since the first video games grabbed our attention and our spare change. These days, the joysticks, 2D figures and cheesy sound effects have given way to full-on interactive gaming. But even though some of them combine a physical workout with a mental challenge, you're still pretty much tied to one spot. However, that's about to change. Here at Singapore's Nanyang Technological University, they're already playing tomorrow's computer games. Using this wearable computer and this headset here, I'm about to join one where everything you can see around me becomes part of the playing field. It's a game where the real world blurs with a virtual gaming experience. I'm now a Pac-Man, that iconic 80s character. The aim of the original game was to navigate your Pac-Man around a simple maze, eating cookies along the way. At the same time, you had to avoid being munched by a purple ghost. This human version, which has no connection with the Namco Bandai original, has pretty much the same rules. Except I'm playing it on an empty street, and the purple ghost is another human. Very weird feeling, actually, because I can see everything, but I know there are some cookies around here. There they are, right there. So, now it's up to me to just walk through them. <laughs> it's a weird feeling because I just go straight through them. <laughs> they appear as an object, but it's like magic. Put my hands through them. Oh, there's another one. You're right where the balls are. <laughs> In fact, they're lining up all the way down this street. It's fantastic. I'm on a roll here. It's all thanks to what its inventor, Professor Adrian Chiok, calls augmented reality. Well, in augmented reality, we see the physical environment, and on top of that, we see virtual objects. For example, in the human Pac-Man game, the player can see, you know, virtual cookies and other types of uh, information. But they're walking around, playing the game, you know, physically using their body. <laughs> This is the technology behind the human Pac-Man. Here we have the goggles and at the front there's a small camera. On top there's an inertia sensor and that measures the pitch and the roll and gives the orientation of a player's head. And there's a heads up display and this is connected back to the backpack. Now I know it's a bit bulky and heavy for now but remember this is a prototype and in the future it will be miniaturised. But let's have a look inside. There's a laptop computer and a GPS tracking system. Now all of this information goes wirelessly between here and a helper station. And that helper has a virtual role to play in the game. You know, the beauty of this game is that there's always two-way communication. In my hand, I've got this handheld keyboard and I can ask a question to my helper through the internet at any time. The player's message appears on the helper's screen. He simply types his response and it appears at the top of the player's heads-up display. So the obvious question for me to ask at this point is, where is the ghost? And they're sending the message back now. It's texting. The ghost is right behind me. Oh, <laughs> oh you got me already. <laughs> Human Pac-Man is more than just a game. The project was sponsored by Singapore's Defence Agency and the technology could be developed as a guidance aid for soldiers or give commanders in the field a real-time view of the battlefield. Game developers are also very interested, but in the meantime, you'll just have to wait for an invitation from Adrian and his Human Pac-Man team.